Good morning, citizens of the beautiful land of C4K. I hope that you are enjoying your summer holidays. I am Reports Maria, and I am bringing you the latest news from outside of the promised land. As you have heard, there has been a lot of commotion and havoc caused outside of the promised land. Let's have a quick rewind. Breaking news. God, the King of Israel, has made a way for him and sinful people to live alongside each other. This changes everything. News just in. Moses' trip did not go according to plan to Mount Sinai. Wait a minute, a golden calf? Doesn't that go against the commandments? Moses is not going to be happy. Welcome to Temple News. Newsflash, God refuses to go with his people into the promised land. Tensions are high as Moses engages in a debate with the God of Israel. More on this story later. What a crazy few weeks we have experienced. Surely things are going to improve for Israel. My international reporter Hannah is on the scene now. Let's find out what's going on. Hannah? Hannah, are you there? Over to you. Oh, hey Maria, it's Hannah the banana. No, wait, sorry, it's Hannah with a banana. Anyway, things have been even crazier outside the promised land. I've managed to get a first hand witness to inform us of the latest developments. But we need the help of our viewers to help us understand God's amazing plan for his people. Boys and girls, can you think of one thing that was good about the promised land? One thing that was bad about the promised land and a reason why God prevented the Israelites from entering the promised land? Over to you, Lindsay. In today's Bible story, we are going to see what happened next to Moses and the children of Israel. They had spent time in the desert building the tabernacle or tent that God had instructed them to build so that he could live with them. Can you see the tabernacle here? Well, God showed himself to the Israelites as a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. The golden calf incident was in the past. Moses had pleaded with God to forgive them and go with them to the promised land. And now they were on their way. One day, the pillar of cloud lifted from the tabernacle and the children of Israel knew it was time to move on again. They continued their journey till they came to the wilderness of Zin. Here they were on the very border of Canaan, the promised land. Now that the Israelites were so near to their new home, God commanded Moses to send out spies to discover who lived in the land and how to go about taking it. Moses chose 12 men to be spies, one from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses gave Hoshea, son of Nun, from the tribe of Ephraim, a new name. He was called Joshua. Go and spy out the land, Moses told them. Find out whether the people that live there are strong or weak, whether there are few of them or many whether they live in the country or in cities with strong stone walls. See whether the land is fruitful, whether there are forests, and bring us back some of the fruits of the land. So the spies set out. They travelled from the south of the country all the way to the north and back again. As they came back, they cut down a bunch of grapes to show the children of Israel. The bunch was so big, it took two men to carry it, hanging from a wooden pole. They also brought back some other fruits with them, figs and pomegranates, and after 40 days, they arrived back in the camp. When the people heard that the spies had come back, they crowded around to hear their report. The land is a beautiful country, the spies said. It is very fruitful, truly flowing with milk and honey. These grapes that we brought back will give you an idea of the fruits of Canaan. It is a lovely land, but we will never be able to conquer it. The people who live there are very strong. They have cities which are fortified with high stone walls, and there are even giants. They are so big that when we saw them, we felt like grasshoppers beside them. When the people heard this, 
They lifted up their voices and wept bitter tears. We wish we died in Egypt or here in the desert, they said. Why did God bring us so far only to be killed? Our women and our children will all be sold as slaves. Come, let us turn around and go back to Egypt. The Israelites were forgetting the most important thing of all. They were forgetting the promises of God. Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, did not agree with this report. They were shocked that the people did not trust in God after he'd brought them all this way and had performed so many wonders for them. If God is for us, we do not have to be afraid, they told the Israelites. He will bring us into Canaan and will defend us against the people of the land. But the Israelites refused to listen. They took up stones to throw at Caleb and Joshua. God heard the children of Israel cry out, We wish we'd died in Egypt or in this wilderness. And he saw them pick up stones to throw at Joshua and Caleb. He was angry with these people who refused to learn to believe in him. All at once, God's glory shone forth from the tabernacle. All the Israelites saw it. This was not the pillar of fire they saw every night. It was the presence of God shining forth in his terrible anger. The Lord said, How long will these people ignore me? How long will they not believe in spite of the miracles I have done among them? They shall no longer be my people. Moses, I will make a great nation out of your children instead. Moses pleaded with God, as he had done before, when the Israelites made the golden calf. He said, Lord, the Egyptians will hear about it. They will say, the Lord was not able to bring them into the land he promised them, and so he killed them in the desert. Lord, you said, the Lord does not become angry quickly, but he has great love. He forgives sin and law-breaking. So, Lord, by your great love, forgive these people's sins, just as you have forgiven them from the time they left Egypt until now. I will forgive them, God said, but not one of these people who have seen all my wonders and still do not trust me, not one of them shall ever see the country I promised to their fathers. Instead, they shall wander in the wilderness for forty years. They wished they had died in the wilderness, I will give them their wish. They shall all die here. Only their little children, who they said would be slaves, only these little children shall ever see the land I promised to them. And Joshua and Caleb, who trusted me, they shall enter the promised land. So the Israelites had to turn their back on the beautiful promised land that they had come so far to see. They had to wander 40 years in the wilderness. They were not able to enter in because they did not trust in God. Only Caleb and Joshua and the little children ever saw the country that flowed with milk and honey. Canaan, the promised land. Wow, what a shocking turn of events. Here at C4K News, we believe that it is very important for our citizens to remember as much of what we cover as possible. In fact, our P3 to 4 section of society has helped us with exactly that this week. Cue the memory verse clip. Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel. Yay. Everyone was fulfilled. Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. Not one of all the Lord's Good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Now time for our game. So we have two families going head to head in competition. We have the Purvis family and the Johnston family. In our story today, the spies found a land that had the most incredible fruit they had ever seen. So in today's challenge, the families have to make the nicest looking cluster of grapes using balloons, string, tape, a large stick and scissors. Wow.
thank you so much to the Purvis and Johnson family for your efforts. I loved watching those videos and the teamwork was amazing and the end product incredible. But this was a challenge. We do have a winner. Drum roll please. And the winner is the Purvis family. <laughs> Round of applause, well done. But for everyone else, we also have a challenge for you. We would love if you could create a bunch of grapes from crafts, recycled goods, a drawing, and we would also love to see these creations. So if you could take a photo and ask your parents to send it to your One Way Club leader or to your Sunday school teacher, that would be amazing. Hi everyone, it's Lindsay here, and it's so good that you've been able to join us today. Weren't those bunches of balloon grapes amazing? <laughs> they looked good enough to eat. And what about our story? I can't believe that even though God promised the Israelites something good, and then they saw that something good, that they still did not believe that God would help them get it. What about the questions? Well, what was good about the promised land? Well, that promised land was beautiful, wasn't it? It was so fruitful and flowing with so many good things. What was bad about the promised land? Well, those big strong people and big strong cities. And why did the Israelites not get to go in? This is the bit that I find really sad. The Israelites didn't trust God enough and so they didn't obey him. And because they didn't obey him, they didn't get to go into the land. The Israelites were scared and afraid of the big strong people and the big strong cities, but they didn't trust that God wanted them to live there and that he would help them and go with them. Hundreds of years later, Jesus came to earth and just as he was leaving to go back up to heaven, he said to his disciples, I want you to go and tell other people about me and teach them everything that I have taught you. And he promised that when they did that, he would always be with them. Well, the disciples could have been scared and not gone and told anybody, or they could have been brave and gone and told other people. What do you think they did? Well, although they probably were pretty scared a lot of the time, the disciples bravely did what God had asked them to do because they trusted that Jesus would be with them just as he promised. And this was the same for Joshua and for Caleb because they showed their trust in God. And so they were allowed to go to the promised land. So maybe the next time that you have the chance to do something that you know God wants you to do, but it feels hard or it looks scary, Perhaps it's a chance to tell your friends about Jesus or um, to stand up for your faith in your class. Well, then we can be like Joshua and Caleb and we can trust God to help us bravely do it. And if you want to tell us about a time that you've had to trust God, we'd love to hear your stories. Well, I think it's about time that we sang a song that reminds us that it's better to trust God and to bravely do hard things than do anything without him. Jesus' disciples learnt this lesson one day when they were on the Sea of Galilee in a boat with Jesus asleep and a storm came up. Well, they got really scared and they cried out and Jesus, he calmed the storm right down. They realised that they were safer in the middle of the storm, in a boat with Jesus, than alone anywhere else. And this song, it's a golden oldie from One Way Club a decade ago, but the words remind us just what the disciples learnt. So why don't you sing along? Rock
Well, citizens of C4K, thank you very much for tuning in to our weekly newsreel. We hope that you now feel well informed about all that is going on around the promised land. Before we go, Hannah has a very important message to share with you guys about how we can ensure that we're learning from all of the shenanigans going on in the promised land. Hannah, over to you. Last thing, we've got to think, do and pray. Think. Maybe you can think of something in your life that you're doing that you know isn't what God would want. It's sinning against God. Or maybe there's something in your life that you know you should be doing, but you're not. Because these things are hard. You're worried what other people will think. Hold that thought. Do. Go to your parents. Ask them to help you look through the Bible and find some of the amazing promises God has made to us, his people, in the Bible. In our memory verse today, it reminds us that God keeps his promises and he will never let us down. He is faithful. Pray. Take all these thoughts and bring them to God. He wants to hear from you. He loves hearing your voice. He will listen and he is always ready to listen to your prayers, your thoughts, your worries. Now we've reached the hardest part of the show. <laughs> this is goodbye. I hope you guys enjoy your summer. But do not forget, whilst you're playing with your toys and enjoying all of your fun activities, to tune in to next week's episode of C4K. I guarantee you won't want to miss it. Yeah.